guys, it's Mara. Um, today I want to talk to you guys, teach you a little bit about your dipstick or your analysis. There's a bunch of names for it. Um, but usually you can get a urinalysis or you can get a UA with micro and that would be the dipstick part along with um, spinning down the urine sample, looking at the bottom part, the sediment, and um, seeing what kind of stuff's in your urine, white cells, red cells, bacteria, mucus, crystals, just any and everything. So. Today we're just talking about the dipstick part. If you want to check out some of my other videos, I've put up some microsco microscopic um, urinalysis videos. But anyway, okay. Now we have instruments that detect the color and decide um, on the range um, how good or bad it is, I guess, the numbers. Um, but originally they held them up. Um, I think they read them after like 30 seconds. I think that's what the instrument does. Um, but compare them to these charts on the bottle. So, the first one I want to talk about is specific gravity. So you can tell it goes from a dark blue to almost like an orange color. Um, the specific gravity on a urine basically tells how much stuff is in there. So, the specific gravity starts at 1, and that is the specific gravity of water. So if you were just peeing out straight water, then it would be 1. Um, but if you have more mucus, more bacteria, so you have protein in it, things that just take up reflex, light, whatever, <laughs> then it can be higher. Um, and then the range goes up to 1.03. So um, the next thing is pH. So that goes from 5 to 9. Um, we get a lot of uh, 5 pHs, but we hardly get ever anything over 8. And actually, if we have anything greater than 8, we have to rerun it to make sure. Um, most of the time, if it's anything above 8, they probably added something to the urine and it's not a real 100% valid urine. Um, with a more acidic urine, then that would be more like five. You're going to see some amorphous um, possibly in the urine. That's just little extra crumblies that aren't, they're just there because of the pH. They kind of um, show up. And then in the more basic urine, you may have phosphates, which is stuff that just comes out of urine solution, I guess. Okay, next thing is leukocytes. So, oh, these all get red at 60 seconds. Never mind, it's a minute. Um, leukocytes, they have anywhere from negative, which is this just white color, which is pretty much the same as the, compens uh, the compensation area. So that is just one little square that has nothing on it that it compares the actual color of the urine so it doesn't affect um, the testing as much. It still can, but I'll get into that later. So leukocytes go anywhere from negative to 2 plus, and that turns a purple color. So leukocytes are white cells. So if you have a lot of white cells in your urine, you're more likely um, having a UTI. So the next one is nitrites. It has um, just like basically a compensation square and then any kind of pink. You can barely, barely tell it's a little bit pink. Um, usually when we have nitrites in urine, it is a lot of pink. It's like a bright pink because nitrite uh, producing bacteria produce nitrite, nitrate, nitrite, nitrite producing bacteria produce nitrite, and that picks up on it. So you can have bacteria, all sorts of bacterial uh, UTIs, but they aren't all nitrate producing bacteria, mostly like the poop bacteria like E. coli and stuff like that produce nitrites. Um, next one is protein. So that's from a yellow color to a darker green color. Um, protein can be, um, you're releasing protein in your urine, your kidneys aren't filtering it out well. Back in, um, you can have casts in your urine, which are actually protein that has encoded the inside of your kidneys and then you kind of pee them out. So that's not a good sign either. Um, I see that in patients um, on like heavy drugs or going through renal failure because they're older and their kidneys are just dying. Next one is glucose. So we have anything from normal 50, 100, 250, all the way up to 1,000. 
So mm, for the most part, only diabetic patients will have glucose in your urine. Um, a lot of those drugs like metformin will make you release glucose in your urine. That's how it tries to get your blood glucose down is basically you're just peeing it out. Um, but glucose in your urine, you're more likely to get yeast infection, uh, yeast UTIs, and um, bacteria because bacteria feeds off glucose. So. Um, next thing is ketones. So another thing, um, if you eat a high protein diet, um, the ketogenic diet, you're going to have ketones in your urine. Um, if you've thrown up, probably ketones. If you haven't eaten a whole lot, you can start producing ketones. If you're in ketoacidosis and you're diabetic and your sugars are going crazy, then you will definitely have ketones in your urine. So it's not always like a super bad thing, but like starvation mode you'd have ketones. Um, your blenogen, I'm pretty sure that's like the breakdown of bilirubin um, that hasn't crossed all the way over. It has to do with your liver and then um, your GI and then over to your urine. But yeah, that one can show really pink. Um, one thing that can give you a super high urobilinogen that is false is if you are on um, the over-the-counter treatment for UTIs that coats your bladder and make sure you're in really orange, um, that will falsely make this really high. Also can make you have false nitrites because it's a pinkish color, the orange, it doesn't always get co compensated super well in your urine and so it'll, it thinks it's actually orange um, and will make these two positive and high. Um, next one we have is bilirubin, same thing. Sometimes when we turn out our testing, it says, um, basically there's a canned comment that says we can't for sure say it's bilirubin because of the colors and stuff like that. Um, and last thing is blood hemoglobin. So it detects blood in that it detects hemoglobin. So really, if you have completely intact red cells, it's not going to detect it that well. But if your red cells have kind of broken down and they release the hemoglobin, then it'll be more positive. Um, and it goes from a yellowish color all the way to a speckledy pattern um, and then to a dark green color if there's a lot of blood in there. And that says about 250 erythrocytes per microliter. So that's a lot. So I got some example strips to show you guys. Um, this is, now this urine was ran a long time ago, um, so it's kind of dried out and the colors kind of fade and change, but obviously I didn't just do this a minute ago because I've been talking for a long time. So if you want to compare these, um, the bottom is where the compensation strip was, so you can tell this urine wasn't um, the best. And by the best, I mean it wasn't the clearest. Um, so you can see there was some blood because it's kind of speckledy. Um, the urobilinogen or the bilirubin was, there was some ur, um, bilirubin, urobilinogen. And it's hard to tell because, like I said, one whatever it's on it at 60 seconds, if you wait a long time, it'll just keep getting darker and darker. Um, it was not positive for nitrites, although at this point it looks pink, but uh, this gives you good... Um, example of what the colors could look like. Um, leukocytes, not too much. Um, and then this would be about a pH of an 8, if you can see that. And specific gravity won't really change. And I think it was 1.010. Looks like right about that one color. So, oh wait, no, those, those, that was right. I forgot. That was our um, control. So everything's positive on that. This was an actual patient one. Um, and you can see its specific gravity was a little higher. There's more stuff in it. Um, pH is about 5. That was right. Um, leukocytes, it did have leukocytes in it. Um, you can see this part's clear or like the compensation. So it did not have any nitrites. And then here's some more of the other colors. It didn't have any blood in there. So it's just the plain yellow guy. So yeah, if you guys had any questions, um, go ahead and comment below. Ask me anything about urine stuff. I've done quite a few years <laughs> in my day. Um, days being days I work. Any day. Um, but yeah, that's just a little 
a little quick run through. There are a lot of different um, UA instruments, some in um, physician's office labs, clinics, um, inside um, big hospitals. Most of the time they have um, the instrument that runs everything and does the microscopic. You don't always have to look at under the microscope under the microscope yourself, but sometimes you do. Just depends where you are, how advanced their technology is. But um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.